Hi, I'm Andrew Crotty. I'm a postdoc at CMU, and I'll be presenting our paper, Are You Sure You Want to Use MMAP in Your Database Management System? MMAP refers to the POSIX system call that provides memory mapped file I.O. managed by the operating system. As you may have guessed from the title, we believe that MMAP based file I.O. doesn't really belong anywhere near your DBMS, and I hope I can convince you of that by the end of the talk. Now, before we begin, just a bit of background. This paper has been nearly a decade in the making. It's a topic that all three of us are extremely passionate about. In fact, one of the authors has even had his Twitter account suspended more than once for making inflammatory statements about MMAP. I'll let you decide which one of us that was. And to illustrate just how serious we are about this whole thing, I thought I'd share with you a few of the alternative titles that we considered for the paper. The first one, MMAP will ruin your DBMS and your life, uh, pretty self-explanatory. And then there was read a book and don't use MMAP in your DBMS. Personally, I thought this one was a little harsh. And finally, the short but sweet, MMAP equals the poop emoji, which I think conveys the point nicely, but I was worried it might break the DBLP listing and I can't afford the hit to my citation count. So by now you're probably wondering like, who in their right mind cares this much about MMAP? What's the big deal? And I think the best way to explain it is actually through a story. Uh, you might call it a, a cautionary tale about what to expect if you ignore our advice and choose to go down this path anyway. So imagine you're the founder of a brand new database startup. You've got an awesome open plan office with plenty of exposed ductwork. Maybe you're doing the standard OLTP or OLAP, or maybe you're focusing on one of these new markets that Andy Pavlo is really excited about, like Web3 or blockchain. You've just raised some seed funding and built out all the cool parts of your system. You have a fancy UI, but there's just one little thing missing. And that's the ability to read from and write two files on persistent storage, which one could argue is the entire point of a DBMS. It's not flashy, it's not fun to code. You've been meaning to watch this really excellent YouTube video you heard about so you can learn how to do it the right way, but it's just so boring that whenever you put it on, you fall asleep after about five minutes. But you're trying to find a quick fix so you can get this thing out the door as fast as possible. So you start looking around at how other DBMSs are handling it. And that's when you notice a lot of them, in fact, some really popular ones are using this thing called memory mapped file IO or MMAP. Now, how exactly does MMAP work? Suppose you have a program such as your DBMS that wants to access a file on disk. All you need to do is pass MMAP the file name, here it's called cider.db, and you'll get back a pointer to the memory mapped file contents. Behind the scenes, the OS will reserve part of the program's virtual address space, but it won't actually start loading file pages into memory until the program needs them. For example, when printing out the value stored at offset zero. But when the OS goes to retrieve the page, it's going to realize that there's no associated physical page in memory. So it'll need to trigger a page fault to fetch it from disk. The OS then adds an entry to the page table, mapping the physical address to the virtual address and the mapping is also gonna get stored in a special CPU cache called the translation look aside buffer or TLB, which will help accelerate future repeat accesses so we don't always have to look things up in the page table. This is sounding pretty good, right? I mean, you can sit back, relax and let the OS do all the heavy lifting while you rake in billions of dollars from your IPO. So you think about it a bit and decide to take a stroll down to the unsavory part of town to try to find a a consultant who can hook you up with an MMAP storage manager for cheap. You know, there are tons of popular systems using MMAP, so you're not worried, you're gonna be fine, and you're never gonna to have to deal with any of that file IO crap yourself. When you get home, you plug in your brand new MMAP storage manager and everything seems fine. But unfortunately, not for long. The first problem you're gonna run into has to do with transactional safety. Since the OS is transparently managing the paging, it can flush dirty pages to disk at any point, even if the writing transaction hasn't yet committed. You can't prevent this from happening and you get no warning when it does. Now, it's annoying because you're expecting everything to just work out of the box, but after a little bit of digging, you see that existing MMAP systems have gotten around this with some variation of either copy on write or shadow paging. You just pick one of those to implement and you're all set, not really a big deal. But then you're going to start to notice the next problem, which is the expensive IO stalls. Again, with the OS managing file IO, you have absolutely no idea which pages are in memory and which ones are on disk, meaning that any time you read a page, you might have to block while the OS fetches it. One simple solution is to provide hints to the OS about your expected access pattern, like whether it's random or sequential, and 
hope that it'll do the right thing, but there's really no way to guarantee that. And you also can't really convey any more complicated access patterns like a B plus tree traversal, for example. Another more involved option is to write your own custom prefetcher to mask the IO stalls, but you're starting to get a bad feeling that this is sounding a lot like what you've heard a traditional buffer pool is supposed to do. Next, things start to get even worse as you run into problems with error handling. You know it's good practice to validate a page you just read from disk against a checksum in the header, and also to double check pages for corruption before writing them back to disk. But again, you have no visibility into when file IO is happening. It's all handled by the OS. Furthermore, now, anytime you access memory map data, you can get a bus error that you need to deal with using clunky signal handlers. So instead of being able to isolate all the IO error handling code inside the buffer pool module, it's now littered throughout your entire code base. The final straw for you is the performance issues. All the other problems we talked about so far are pretty annoying, but ultimately manageable. You can deal with them through various workarounds but you're really not sure how you can solve the poor performance your pilot customers keep complaining about. After trying everything, it seems like the only way to fix things is through modifying the OS, and that's when you know you're in big trouble. So what happened to the great performance that all the MMAP DBMSs supposedly have? Well, we ran some experiments to see what exactly is going on. Here's the obligatory experimental setup slide. I know this is a bunch of boring words, and you just wanna see the plots, but I wanna point out a few important things here. First, our baseline is the FIO benchmarking tool, and we're using the odirect flag to bypass the OS page cache, so everything is just being read directly into user space buffers. Second, the database is two terabytes, and we're only giving the OS 100 gigabytes for the page cache to ensure that it's a larger than memory workload, so pretty much every access is coming from secondary storage. And lastly, all of our experiments are read-only, which is the best case scenario for MMAP, since there isn't any extra overhead from the transactional safety mechanisms I mentioned earlier. Our first experiment measured the number of reads per second for a workload with random access patterns, which you might find in an OLTP application. Obviously, we'd expect MMAP's random hint to perform best here, which it does, and the other two hints are pretty terrible. Specifically, we observed three distinct phases. MMAP started out pretty comparable to FIO, then dropped to basically zero for about five seconds right after the page cache filled up, and then it rebounded to roughly half of FIO's performance, although it's pretty unstable, as you can see here. So why are we observing this behavior? Well, there are three causes. First is that the OS is using only a single process for page eviction, which becomes fully CPU bound in our experiments. Second is the overhead of synchronizing the page table and associated data structures under high contention. In this case, it's 100 concurrent threads. And third is by far the biggest problem, something called TLB shootdowns. If you recall from earlier, I mentioned that the TLB caches page table entries in the CPU, but when pages get evicted, those entries need to be removed, which requires an expensive interprocessor interrupt. So we measured the TLB shootdowns that occurred during this experiment and you can see that the number of random reads per second is inversely proportional to the number of TLB shootdowns. Next, we looked at the read bandwidth of a sequential scan, which would be typical in an OLAP workload. We started with a single SSD, and we see that the random hint performed much worse than the other two, which again makes total sense. And we also observed the same sort of drop off in performance that we saw in the previous workload, which happens when the page cache fills up. MMAP was initially on par with FIO, but then it levels off at about two times worse. When we repeated the experiment with 10 SSDs using software RAID 0, the performance gap is even more pronounced, and MMAP was about 20 times worse. So the main takeaway here is that for sequential workloads, MMAP falls far short of saturating the SSD bandwidth. Now, back to our story. After all these issues, you skim through the last 50 or so years of database literature, Realize that what you actually need is a traditional buffer pool, spend a little time implementing it the right way, and now your DBMS is in great shape. It's a happy ending. So I'll just briefly conclude with a few parting thoughts. I hope I've convinced you that MMAP and DBMSs absolutely do not mix. Even if you're extremely clever or you have piles of VC money to throw at your engineering team, it doesn't matter. You will inevitably run into these issues. So save yourself the headache and please, please, please do not use MMAP in your DBMS. However, there is one important exception to this final point. If you'd like to be included in our planned follow-up paper at CIDR 2032, are you still using MMAP in your database management system? 
please keep doing what you're doing. And we'd love to hear from you in about 10 years. So with that, thank you. And I'm happy to take any questions.